Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge15, brought to you by ServiceNow. guest Mike Sill, SVP of Global Shared Services at Beckton Dickinson. Welcome to theCUBE. Hey, great to be here. So Thanks we're, for inviting me. We're here at ServiceNow's No15 event and um, you know, all the talk about transformation, everything on, everything is a service, speaks to the whole cloud. So I got to get your take on what's going on in the industry right now. Are people really building out these shared services, these cloud services? What is the trend? Is it more regroup, build out? How would you put all the action? Well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting question. I would say that... First inning? First inning, yeah. Second inning, maybe. Um, when you think about uh, cloud services, all of us as individuals are using cloud services every day. I order from Amazon at least twice a day, get deliveries twice a day. Um, but beyond Amazon, almost everything you're using out on the web is already cloud-enabled you know, cloud, cloud service. It's all, all cloud. Enterprise has been slow to adopt that. There's a variety of reasons. but uh, slow no more is what's happening now. So I think that we're all getting comfortable as an enterprise using these uh, these things called clouds, um, and and I think we're adopting them as quickly as possible. So that's what's going on right now. Just a little background on your role in your organization, what you guys do, and then we'll go into some questions. And okay. Uh, I'm actually the, the the guy responsible for the shared service uh, capability in the company at BD. Um, Shared service is really a, a, a place where we collect up a lot of services that may have been done in many, many places around the company, kind of small groups of people. We tend to collect them up and, and, and put them in a single location so we can drive process efficiency and consistency. You could imagine a, a team of people all over the world trying to, trying to execute a certain process, but they're so dis, you know, dispersed around the world, it's very difficult to know what people are doing. So bringing it all together, helps us kind of drive a, a, a process understanding, a process efficiency. You guys make medical equipment, uh, right? We do um, make medical equipment. Talk a little bit more about your business, because i got a follow-up question. So about. we're about a $12 billion medical equipment provider. We, we build our own, we manufacture our own. Uh, uh, Becton has been in, in, in business for 125 years, uh, so they've been around a very long time. Uh, they just acquired the company that I came from called CareFusion. CareFusion was a spinoff of Cardinal Health. Um, that was about, a, again, about a $12 billion transaction and it just closed about 30 days ago. So we're both in the medical device business and we're really interested in, in uh, patient health and safety, uh, primarily. So people are getting instrumented, the digitization of technologies, I mean obviously we know Moore's Law well, but there's all kinds of new software and, and mobile technologies you know, coming into everyday consumer businesses. How is that affecting your industry and how, how is the technology changing and then consequently what does that mean for service delivery? I think it's really interesting. I think when I look at our business, we, we are exactly the picture that I think Frank was talking about this morning in the, in the opening uh, dialogue. If you guys saw that conversation, uh, really around beautiful outside building, but look what's inside. I don't know, maybe it wasn't Frank, but it was one of the guys. That morning. was Frank. And so, With all and the so cube inside. That is exactly, yeah. I think our building is even a little bit nicer on the outside <laughs> than that building. But inside, we still are sort of in the Stone Age, or at least in the 90s, with how we're processing information, right? And so, um, I think that, that the cloud and mobile and social is now allowing us to lift up some of these old email, workflow, paper processes, you know, into something that is more manageable, and therefore, um, you know, measurable and manageable, I guess is the way you put it, measurable and manageable. So, uh, for the first time, I think, all the stars are starting to come together, and uh, and or have come together, and now I think it's like sort of safe to do this, uh, and and very exciting to do so this. What's the mandate internally? Obviously, they, they don't say, "Hey, we're the Stone Age," like you're saying, but they say, "Look, we got to modernize." Yeah. What's the mandate around modernization? Well, I think there's two there's two mandates, or maybe three mandates. One is just the scalability that we need to compete in the world. And what world are we in? We're in a very different world than we were. You know, I would say even 10 years ago, you'd never heard of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. You know, all the governments weren't being, you know, uh, bankrupted by 
aging populations that require more health care. And uh, so we have to bend the, the curve. We have to bend the cost curve of health care is what we're really, you know, must do as an industry. So we're bringing S-curves from other industries into um, our industry. And so that means that some of the same techniques that were used in high tech and, you know, companies like Amazon and others, as we mentioned before, we're trying to apply in our industry to get scale and to be able to compete and win, right? So there's really, it's no different than competing and winning, is that the, that's the fundamental. Um, and I think that, like I said, the stars are all aligned right now. Maybe 10 years ago, they weren't aligned. And that's a direct result of the Affordable Care Act, things like meaningful use, technology? All, all that's work. trying to bend the curve. That's what it's trying to do because the governments are looking and going, whoa, we don't have this much money. And we used to because we didn't have as many people needing this much service. But as people age, we're all going to need, unfortunately, this much service. So the, the challenge to our industry is how do we bend that curve? The ones that can bend it the best still delivering high quality care at, the, at, a, at a low price, right, are going to win. You talk about bending the curve because our health costs are in increasing at a very rapid rate. Yeah, have, certainly have been before the last two years. But the whole industry has, has responded as it should. And uh, you know, now it's really a who can do it best, right? So what's on the hood? So shared services, how, take us through day in the life of, of the innovation strategy. Um, collapse people together, invest dollars in new apps, right. and term microservices is hot trend in Silicon Valley right now, well, around apps and yeah. mobile. Yeah. So if you look at how services are existing today inside the company, there's a lot of paper, there's a lot of paper flowing around. Even though we've collapsed things together, if you look at the process, there's a lot of steps in the process that are not really useful. And we're, what we do as an organization, we actually have a couple partner organizations, is the first thing we do is collapse it to where we can see it in, in one place. The second we do is map that process and try to understand, is every step here useful? Do we need all these steps? Examples can be as, as simple as just, why do we need that approval? It's 100% approved every time. Nobody's ever rejected it. Why keep it, right? And you say, well, how much can that cost? That approval may cost you 20, 30 cents per. If you do a million of those a year, it's real money, right? So you could bring, quantify that. Yeah, bring in those pros, bring in those processes together, and then working to lean them out, so that at the end of the day we have a much more streamlined process. Go back to the Amazon conversation I talked before. Have you ever talked to anybody at Amazon? No. Have you ever bought anything at Amazon? Yes. Yeah, every day, right? We use web so, services too. It's and fantastic. you think, <laughs> you think, gosh, I've bought all these things at you know at Amazon. Yeah, I've never called. In our business, you know, we still touch probably 60% of the orders that come in for some reason. Why? Yeah. I mean, Why? Uber and because Amazon the, are great examples yeah. of what it should look like, right? Exactly, that, that's the definition of a service. You know, it's a service that has a provider, a requester, a manager, and approval. That's and a bunch of automation in between. And a whole bunch of automation <laughs> in the middle. And once you start that, you can just keep adding and adding and adding to that to get more and more sophisticated services. So what's um, the playbook? Consolidate, get that hiring new people. How about new talent developers? It's, it's really amazing. The, it seems like there's, you know, when I look at my organization, I've got guys that are writing Lotus Notes that are just eating up, eating up service now, right? They're like going, yeah, we just we're waiting for somebody who could, you know, give us Thank a platform <laughs> that we can do something with, right? So they feel empowered, right? And then of course all the young people, they just sort of come out of they come out of school like automatically knowing how to. Well, yeah, if I wrote it, it'd work like that. Yeah, and I, it does, yeah, right? I, and so I, I there's not that. a whole lot of learning curve there, right? So we saw it this morning a little bit on that. It's, it's not super complicated to build, you know, very effective services and microservices even even faster, right? Two clicks and what's the future of IT to enable this? Because what you're basically pointing to is the transfer transfer the shift from old to new, whether yeah. it's people, process, yeah. and money, whatever. Yeah. But what's the what's the enablement in IT? What specifically uh, do you see as the key enabler? Technology, process, business? I think it's a combination. You know, I was, I, was, I was going through a little list there trying to think about what are the big drivers for, for successful services. You have to have the stars aligned. You have to have a process, you know, understanding. So this end-to-end -end process. Otherwise, little point solution processes don't yield very much, right? End-to-end -end is the thing that delivers something to the organization of value. In other words, if you think about a manufacturing line, you can have this beautifully streamlined manufacturing line except this one step in the middle that's broken. Right? If that step is broken, no matter what you do to the rest of the steps, that's your, that's your constraint, that's your bottleneck, unless you address it, no good. So end-to-end -end modeling is very important to understand and get the leverage and so value, right? So that's operations management kind of philosophy. Well, that, that's definitely one. Then, in order to do that, you need to be able to really 
uh, measure and manage right, that process. So you need some technology to do that effectively, especially at scale, right? And in third, I think the most important element that we should always walk away from on the services side is service is about people. It's about people first. You know, machines don't need too much help. You know, they already know how to talk to each other. It's really about people and getting back to, you know, how can I build something that's going to help this person get what they need, right? And so, I, I, we can't overlook that. It's not and the just consumer technology. aspects these days with elegance and user interface plays into it too. You talk about the people piece, right? That that has oh. to be a component. Yeah, I mean, user experience is, is very critical. I think it's the reason, you know, one click to order again, Amazon is, is the deal. I love it, one click. So, if, while we're walking through our organization, we're thinking user first. What's it going to feel like to use this? Because if people don't use it, it doesn't matter what you do. So what was, what's your service now journey look like? You take us back to when you first oh, yeah, started. That's, that's, that's a long time ago. So, you know, I think I started just before Luddy started. No, it's just, just a little <laughs> joke. Uh, uh, so I was customer 27. I think I know that number. At least that's what they, they tell me. Uh, customer 27. We were working at a company, I was CIO at a company called ResMed in, in town, great company, and uh, we were replacing our, our IT service desk. That was as simple as it was. And, and we met up with the ServiceNow guys locally, they were a local company, so it's almost like drinking the local beer, you know? We said, you know what? We like these guys. They, they, they can surf, they know what they're doing, you know? So let's, let's look at their platform, okay, we like that. Okay, we just decided to go with it. So it was, it was not a big RFP, it was like, that looks right, we're doing it, right? And yeah. we, it, was a, it was a really good decision and, and uh, sometimes you get really lucky, right, with those kind of things, so, so we did. When I left there about five or six years later, I went to CareFusion and of course, I, I was really using the full platform at that time and that was like three years ago. Did you bring in it was, now yes, that new opportunity? Yes, so we brought that straight across and IT as a service and it really changed our lives at, at CareFusion on the ITSM platform. We use it end to end today, they're using it, uh, I would call it the ERP for IT, I literally would call it that. Was that so, a condition of your employment? Or? Not, a, not a condition, <laughs> but it was a fait accompli, because I was, I was sold already and, and we were doing that, right? So You were used to it too. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. And, and we had, you know, there's, there's data. If you have data and it's working well, it's easy to you know, just take it to the next step, right? So that's what we did there. And then now that BDs come in, now we're taking it to the next level up, which is going to be the shared service. We're hoping and praying we get that done. Okay, soon. so BD was not a service now? They're not a customer? service now account oh, okay. uh, today. Uh, you know, we're working through all those those pieces, but uh, I'm, well, I'm, so a, a, I'm an advocate. I'm, I'm so, so single CMDB sounds great, makes a lot of sense. But if you have a $12 billion organization, merger of a couple of yeah, it's a large big, organizations, can you get there? It's a big challenge. Uh, it won't go there overnight, but I think eventually we will get there. Well, and There's just a lot of value in that. There's a lot of value in a single. But so why, I, I talk to some customers and, and sometimes there's friction. And then maybe it's organizational, maybe it's politics, I don't know, but can you describe that and, and how do you get through that? Well, it, it, a long time ago, because I've been in this business a long time, they talked about the OSI stack. Anybody know what the OSI <laughs> stack is? <laughs> well, do we know. <laughs> the OSI stack, right? But, but that's layer one through seven. And when you get to layer eight, nine, and 10, you know, religion, money, politics, <laughs> right? That's layer eight, nine, and 10 on the stack. And so every new opportunity one goes to, one has to figure out <laughs> layer eight, nine, and 10. And, and so um, we'll, we'll make our way through that. I think that, again, data, Data matters, and we have a lot of data at CareFusion, a let, lot of data. Let me talk about that for a second, because I know Dave always gets on, yeah, big generators, talking about big data. Not about big data, about the data, to get the quantification to show the benefits, right? So, um, data's collectible. So, like, what are some of the data points that you acquire that you put under your wing, if you will, in your previous experiences in service management? Well, let's do that's what some sort of app. Like, you know, for the folks out there that are looking at Transforming. You're talking business impact. Right? Yeah, just is, is it, well, is it, is it, is it PKIs on the business side? Is you know, it? I, I won't even get really sophisticated. I'll just say that being able to show people at the executive table what is IT doing for us? Don't even have to cost What's it perfectly. It's everyone wants to know. Just what, <laughs> what are you doing for us? They just being able to see what it is that we're doing. IT guys get that question? Really important, right? <laughs> the second thing is we've been using the demand module and the project module for a while. And the demand and project module allowed us to run a governance process that BD has adopted, which I thought was really exciting, right? Because they said, hey, well, you guys actually have something here where you're bringing it all together, power of one platform. We can see what everybody's doing. We can actually not have the left hand and the right hand fighting each other. 
So we're starting to move into that direction as well with so BDNS. That's radar exciting. on what's going on, so you can see the skirmishes, if you will, or the goodness happening in the organization. Yeah, we're talking about forward stuff. We're talking about we're going to go make some investments. Are they all? I'm not going to use the word aligned. Are they all sort of in the same direction, or some orthogonal? And we shouldn't be doing those because we're not going to get anywhere. We're going to fight each other, right? So and cost and, and not even know it, per, perhaps, right? There, so you're talking about demand and project. Mm. You're talking about having better visibility yes. on what's going on, but. Companies in that business have always sort of marketed themselves as 360 degree view of the business or the project portfolio, demand management, get control of your, your project. What's different? You know, it's all hard. There's nothing easy about it. I think that when the, when the, when the technology is right in front of you and you can see somebody else doing it, and then you acquire the somebody else doing it, it makes it a lot easier to believe you could do it too, right? So I don't think it's, it's no secret sauce. I just think that in this particular case, we have a good technology platform. It's, it, straightforward to, to, to use it, uh, and somebody that we just acquired is using it. So how hard can that be? Now, are you guys doing app development inside of uh, I, I wouldn't or? say we're doing a lot of app development. We are, we are beginning to do, I'll call it workflow development and in you know, small app development, but not in a big way yet. We're, we're close. And uh, that's our next big step. So something you, you oh we want to do. It. We totally want to do it, and that's where we're trying to go. I mean, I, I, I have a lot of debate with people. They talk about what is an app. You know, is a oh, task an app, or do you have to be, you know, because because ServiceNow will deal with tasks like there's nothing to is do. Is that a service or is it an app? Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just it's a task. Even it's even smaller, right? So yeah. so um, we're always wrapping around the axle a little bit on what exactly is the the right nomenclature. But I think we're doing a lot of that a lot of that, especially in the ITSM space, and I think we're going to do a whole bunch more when we get to the ESM side, which is right in front of us. So. How does that change the way in which you approach development, service development, app development, task development, in terms of skill sets? Well, I think it, I don't know, I don't want to say it, it I think it puts a bigger skill set emphasis on, on user experience mm -hmm. and a lot less on the technology. The technology is available. To, to, to build things quickly and to assemble things. But to get it aligned with how it's going to be used, that's the secret sauce. That's always the secret sauce. I go back to Steve Jobs, you know, talking about how wide can the iPhone be? Well, no wider than his thumb can reach, right? Or something like that. I, it, I think the, the technology side is, is, is helping us a lot with the skills, but the skills are shifting to soft, more soft on the, on, you know, sort of the UE side, the, almost the marketing side, almost the process side. And I think the technology is pretty pretty directly available. And how does mobile fit into that? Hopefully, it fits in great. I know I'm going to make some announcements here. I don't know what's coming from ServiceNow, but I'm hoping in the next year we get native instead of the HTML5, and I think that'll be really cool. And I think there's, I don't know, if I don't know what the word is on that on the street, but I don't have any insight. But that's what I think. Why does that appeal to you? Just so you can it's take all, advantage of it's all of user experience. Yeah. You know, it's user experience. It's and hard to nail the native app because it, you have great functionality, but you miss one little then it's not native. action. Yeah, and it's so hard with the form factor. Yes, but it's, it's what everyone wants. I know it. We're here. I know. This. We do too. We do too. I, you know, I, I we're, we're doing okay with HTML5, I and mean, we were all using, you know, uh, uh, you know, parts of it today. But I think the ability to be native is going to make it even easier. Yeah, it makes the buttons bigger and more. You know, the problem I have with web responses sometimes the clicks don't click. So we have That's the same right. Problem. So critical success factors, for the folks out there who have um, uh, maybe gone with a competitor of ServiceNow uh, and or have legacy, huge issue, legacy. How do you deal with that? Because you mentioned the stacks, eight, nine, and 10 uh, layers in the stack. That's a lot of the data. Money, um, and also politics, politics religion, and yeah. legacy. Yeah. Technology, so, religion is what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I think it all, it all starts and end, ends with you know, are you, are you trying to manage cost out of what you have today, or are you trying to deliver something for the future, right? So where is that platform to evolve on? If you look in your bag of tricks and you don't have a platform to evolve on that you know is going to be growing and enabling, you're, you're playing with yesterday's, you know, toys. You don't have the, the basic capability. There's no reason to try to, you know, sort of beat a dead horse, you know? So at some point you have to jump, right? And so um, I think finally the stars are aligned. I said earlier that, that, you know, service begins and ends with people. Right, so you got to get the right team that's leaning in. The team being, you know, the people that you're counting on to, to build this vision and execute it for you, right? So you got to have a little bit of that. You got to have some top leadership. I'm going to talk about service now, not ITSM, but service. You got to have the top leadership of the company uh, mentioning 
every chance they can, right? We're doing these services transformation and getting value from them and look what we're doing with it, right? So usually what happens in companies today, the guys that just did the new patented something are walking across the stage, the sales guys are you know, making it rain and all this, yeah. and they get all these awards and stuff, you know, and, the, and the guys that are like grinding it out in the trenches trying to come up with a few dollars of savings and, and be more efficient, they don't really get talked about too much, right? So having that CFO, that CEO, that whole leadership team, every time they're giving out the big awards, reach back and say, it wouldn't be possible if we weren't transforming the services side of this business, creating the, the money to invest in these new technologies or these new go-to-market strategies. So really, really important for the hearts and minds of people who are grinding it out, right? And trying to transform what used to work fine for us, not so much anymore, right? So we're having to move our cheese a little bit. And then I think um, the last thing I'd say is, somebody said it earlier today, the, the single source of truth. A lot of the legacy stuff we're looking at and using don't have single source of truth. Right, six thousand SharePoint sites. They've promised that. How can for you make? How can you make any sense? How can you make any sense of that? Right. So, so I think single source of truth is, is can't be understated. And then finally, what I like to think about in the services world is we want to shrink the distance between people and what they're doing. So think about the next nearest neighbor. I want everybody in my shared service team and everybody in the company to be thinking about what what work is somebody handing me, and how much friction is around that. What work am I handing somebody else? What friction's around that? Don't think about end to end, it'll make your mind warp sometimes. Just get, just get the next nearest neighbor a little bit more efficient. The first right? hop. First hop, first <laughs> hop, there we go. Trust the process. And trust, <laughs> right, yeah. and trust. The trust is yeah. critical, thank you. Well Mike, we appreciate you getting, spending the time with us here in theCUBE. We gave the final question, final word. Quickly share your performance metrics of the future, 10 years now, down the road. What's your vision for the kind of data that we'll be gathering to show not only what IT's doing, what's next? So I, I will predict that in 10 years we won't have any IT metrics at all because we won't need them, right? We will be so good at providing services, right? They'll all be, I mean, how many metrics do you get from Amazon? None. Yeah, like they ever share with you? None. Do you care? No. They ship it before you order it, the water right? comes in, out through the faucet, So works. the answer is the data is going to be very valuable, but not to the customer. Right? It's going to be inside and we're going to be doing things with data we've never dreamed of. So that's what I think. So the idea of metrics, you can forget about it. Yeah, outcomes. Outcomes. Business that's metrics. It. All that's right, it. Mike Zill, Senior Vice President, Global Shared Services with Beckton Dixon. This is theCUBE, bringing you the data, sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back here live in Las Vegas with ServiceNow, Knowledge15, hashtag Note15. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.